Today we're making a vegan mushroom risotto. It is the perfect dish to charm or seduce your special someone. Here's why. First, risotto is rustic, but it's still fancy enough for date night. Kind of like a cross between Jon Snow and Jamie Lannister, or Leonardo DiCaprio and the Revenant meets Leonardo DiCaprio and the Great Gatsby. Risotto is a dish that requires a lot of attention and focus, so you both have to put your phones away and really be present with one another. And isn't that what everyone wants at the end of the day? Finally, when you make risotto, you gotta open a bottle of wine, which gives you the opportunity to impress your date with your fancy wine knowledge. A Charles Shaw 2019, we should let this one breathe. All right, now you know why risotto is super sexy, so let's do it. Make the risotto, not the other thing you were thinking about. Get your mind out of the gutter. We've got our large nonstick frying pan, medium high heat. We'll let that heat up, we'll add some olive oil, and once it's hot, we'll add the mushrooms. Today I'm using a mixture of mushrooms from the farmer's market and grocery store, cremini mushrooms, which are inexpensive but still flavorful, maitake mushrooms, which have a robust chicken-like flavor, some meaty and firm shiitake mushrooms, these lovely velvety oyster mushrooms, nutty and buttery beech mushrooms, and finally, some king trumpet mushrooms. Let the mushrooms cook undisturbed for a few minutes so they get some nice color on them. And while the mushrooms are cooking, we're gonna prepare our miso butter. We need four tablespoons of vegan butter that have been softened at room temperature. Once the butter is softened, we'll mix in some white miso paste and you'll use a fork to cream everything together until it's well combined and has sort of a whipped consistency. Traditionally, risotto uses Parmesan cheese, which is a really potent source of umami, all those rich savory notes. So to mimic that in a plant-based way, I use miso butter and it really, really makes a difference. Cook the mushrooms until they're nicely browned, about eight to nine minutes, stirring and shaking the pan occasionally. Let's reduce the heat to medium and we're going to enhance the flavors of the mushrooms with some garlic and thyme. We'll need to mince six garlic cloves. Half of this will get added to the mushrooms and we'll use the other half liter with the rice and we'll roughly chop up two tablespoons of fresh thyme, add it to the garlic and these guys get added to the mushrooms along with some kosher salt to season. And the reason we're salting the mushrooms now instead of at the beginning is that mushrooms are really spongy and they're already pretty high in water content. So if you add salt at the beginning, it draws that water out. So your mushrooms end up being a little bit more watery. So if you want crispier mushrooms that are a little bit meatier, you gotta wait until the end of cooking the mushrooms to add the salt. Cook this mixture for two to four minutes and stir to prevent the garlic from burning. Next, we'll add in that creamed miso butter and stir it into the mushrooms. Let's cook that for two more minutes and then we'll take this pan off the heat and we won't need it until the end. All right, the mushrooms are done. Just gonna have a little taste test. This is the definition of like an umami bomb. We've got all these different kinds of mushrooms. We've got miso paste, we've got vegan butter. It's very delightful. So we're gonna set these mushrooms aside and we're gonna get started on the risotto. The reason I'm not cooking these with the rice is that it's gonna make it harder to stir the rice if everything's in the pot, but also cooking the mushrooms with the rice will make the mushrooms mushy. Mush, it will make the mushrooms mushy. And you don't want mushy, <laughs> don't want mushy mushrooms. You want a velvety, luxurious, creamy risotto, but not mushy, mushy, no mushiness. So we're gonna put these aside. Now it's time to heat up our vegetable broth on the stove, and today I'm gonna use a store-bought vegetable broth, but if you wanna make this dish truly epic, you can use mushroom broth. Whenever I cook with mushrooms, I save all the scraps and pieces that are too small to cook, any leftovers, any tough stems, I put those in this mushroom bag. I stick that in the freezer, and when I have enough mushrooms, I make mushroom broth. I have a recipe for mushroom broth in my cookbook. It's actually the first recipe, and it's made with onions, red wine, a lot of mushrooms, soy sauce, it's rich and hearty. I actually describe it in the book as having a a stunning sensual bouquet, so it would make this risotto even more seductive. But regular store-bought vegetable broth also works great. Heat the vegetable broth in a separate saucepan and bring it to a simmer. You wanna keep it warm for when you add it to the risotto. And two main reasons why you wanna be using hot vegetable broth. First, if you add cold or room temperature broth to hot rice, it's going to cool things down, take longer to cook. And secondly, when you use cold or room temperature broth, you're going to have more uneven cooking. So some rice grains are gonna be creamy, whereas some are gonna be firm, but if you use hot Hot broth, everything's going to cook continuously and evenly, so you're gonna have a consistently creamy texture. While the vegetable broth is heating up, we'll prepare our leeks. They have this mild, delicate flavor that pairs really well with the earthy, bold, nutty mushrooms, and they get slightly sweet when they cook down. Trim the dark green tops off of the leeks. They're a bit tough, and I'll show you how to use those in a minute. Then peel these papery outer layers off, and you wanna bisect the leeks in half lengthwise, and then slice them into thin rings. Then you're gonna to wanna to wash these thoroughly in a bowl of cold water, because leeks are dirty little things. Just swish your hands around to loosen the sand from the leeks, and then scoop them out using a slotted spoon or just your hands so that you leave all the sand and dirt behind in the bowl with the water. To the leeks, we're gonna add that 
that reserved half of the minced garlic we did earlier and cook those together. And for these dark green tops, you can save these to make homemade vegetable broth or you can add them to soups to simmer and then take them out. But my favorite new thing to do is slice the tops really thinly, fry them for a couple minutes in some olive oil, medium-ish heat, stir frequently, then transfer them to a paper towel to allow them to crisp up and they make a great crispy topping for savory dishes. Now let's get cooking on that risotto. I'm heating up this deep non-stick saute pan to cook the risotto in. You can also use a Dutch oven, but you might need to use a little bit more oil to prevent it from sticking. We're gonna add the olive oil right now, then go in the leeks and the garlic, and we'll cook this mixture for two minutes, maybe three, until the leeks start to soften. And now it's time to add in our rice. If you've ever made risotto before, you know you can't use just any old rice. You have to use a very certain type of rice, medium grain white rice. So here in the States, the most common variety you can find in most grocery stores is our boreo rice. But if you can get your hands on some carnaroli rice, it's essential to roll your R's. It's an Italian rice that's known as the king of risotto rice. It's even creamier than this stuff, but it is a little hard to find. Where do you get your box? Oh, this? I won it off an Italian grandmother in a game of cards. Yeah, you didn't think I could play cards, but I can. You can't play cards. No, I can't. I just lied. I got it uh, at an Italian grocery store. Add the rice and stir quickly. You want to toast this rice for about 60 seconds, maybe two minutes until it smells slightly toasty. And the reason you do this is because toasting the rice helps it absorb the liquids slowly and without becoming soggy. Next comes my favorite part, adding the white wine. We're going to deglaze the pan with a dry white wine, such as a Pinot Grigio or a Sauvignon Blanc. You want to get in there and stir up any of those browned bits stuck to the bottom of the pot, especially important if you're not using a nonstick pan. Plus, that's also going to infuse more flavor into the risotto make it easier to stir and you'll cook the wine until it's mostly evaporated and no longer smells like alcohol three to four minutes now it's time to gradually add in our hot vegetable broth about one cup at a time one of the keys to good risotto is to stir frequently but contrary to what you might have heard you don't want to stir constantly because that can actually lead to gluey rice but also don't forget to stir at all because then you'll end up with rice that sticks to the pan and gets burned so you want to aim for something in the middle like stirring every 30 seconds once the rice has absorbed the liquid it's time to ladle in another cup of broth. And the reason you add the broth gradually and stir frequently is because that process agitates the rice grains and that releases the starch in the rice and that is what makes risotto naturally creamy. If you were to instead just dump all the broth in at once, you'd be basically boiling the rice, which does not lead to creamy rice. That said, if you do want to take the lazier, low effort route, I do have a similar recipe for mushroom risotto in my cookbook, the Vegan Instant Pot Cookbook. It's really tasty, but doesn't require the stirring. Continue this process of ladling in more broth, stirring frequently, waiting until the liquid has been absorbed, until you add more, until the rice is slightly firm and creamy. It shouldn't be soft or mushy, and it should take about 20 minutes. And as soon as the risotto seems done, you want to take it off the heat. One of the trickiest parts about making risotto is knowing when it's actually done because it's very easy to overcook it. And that is where the smush test comes in handy. The smush test, like it sounds, is a lot more fun when you do it with a partner. Just ask my friends Branston and Pickle. Take a grain of the rice and put it on a cutting board or counter and smush or smear the grain downwards with your finger. It should be pretty smooth, but you should still see some of that al dente white center in the middle. When the risotto is done, add in those miso butter mushrooms we made earlier and stir to combine so they're evenly incorporated and warm them through for just a minute or two. Now this is totally optional, but if you have vegan Parmesan at home, you can add a little bit in now. No worries if you don't have any, it's still really good without it. And don't add too much because you want the main flavor to be the miso mushrooms. Taste the risotto, add a little bit of salt or pepper as needed. I like a lot of freshly cracked pepper on mine before serving. Risotto is the best as soon as you make it. It retains its creamy and velvety texture, so be sure to scoop up some while it's still hot. And for a pop of color, I like to add a little chopped parsley. Time for a taste test. This is so velvety and creamy and luxurious, and it's got those rich, savory notes. I'm gonna go share a bowl of this with my special someone, and if you're in the mood for more mushroom recipes, check out my incredible mushroom stroganoff.